Hey friends, it is Jenna What Is Up and welcome back to the Board Game Garden and welcome to the games that I played in the month of March, which March was a very busy month, I will say that right now. I had a bunch of different board game related things going on. I had Breakout Con, which is my favorite local convention that I went to for three days. I went for a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then I also went to Adam, which I did that from like a Wednesday all the way to a Monday. So it was a pretty long time. I think we had about three or four full days of gaming. So you best believe that I got a lot of gaming done and I played a ton of amazing games. So I'm very excited to chat about all the games that I played this month. So we're going to get into my board game stats and then we will get into the herb garden, which is a little section that I am starting to do here on this type of video where I talk about three like smaller box card games that I really enjoyed this month. And then we'll get into my top 10 games of the month and that'll be it. And then I will have my sewing solo episode up shortly after this one. So um, yeah. Without further ado, let's get into this video. If you guys are interested in seeing all the games that I played in March, as well as my top 10 games of March, then just keep on watching and give this video a, a big thumbs up if you do enjoy. Also hit the subscribe button down below if you've yet to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. Also comment down below some of your favorites for March. I would love to know that. But without further ado, let's get into all of the board game stats, shall we? All right, so getting right into the stats for the month of March. So like I always mention, this is the board game stats app that I use if you guys are interested, but getting into the stats. So for the month of March, I had a total of 61 plays. Um, actually in the month of February, so the month before I had 43. So it's went up quite a bit this month, which is awesome. And I knew that was gonna happen because I had a ton of different like events and stuff and really good opportunities to play a ton of board games. So yeah, total of 61 plays. Um, we played 55 or I played 55 different games and then 36 of them were new to me. So I played a ton of new games this month, but that is just like one of my favorite things is diving into new games. Um, but I also do love going back and playing older games as well. So yes, those were all the stats um, there. And then also for BGA, so Board Game Arena, I've been playing a little bit, but I feel like all of the games that I am playing right now are taking quite a long time because I have been busy. Um, and so I finished up 14 games in March and I am in, I'm I think right now I'm currently in like 16 different games on BGA. So if you're in a game with me on BGA, apologies if I've been behind on my games, but it's been very fun. Um, so BGA, I finished up 14 games uh, there. But yes, that is everything for the stats. Let's get into the herb garden, shall we? So sadly, the three games that I'm going to be talking about for the herb garden today are three games that I do not own, but I played um, at a few of these different events. So I played one of them at Breakout Con and then I played two of them at Adams. So the first one I'll talk about is the one that I played at Breakout Con. I was actually introduced to this one by my friend Aiden. And this is one that I've seen before. It's from the same publisher. I believe it's called First Fish Games, I believe. Believe. Um, they made Mistwind, which is one that I covered here on the channel. I did a solo um, playthrough of it, but um, Mistwind is from First Fish Games, and they also have a game called Town Builder Covenden, I believe. I'm not 100% sure how to uh, pronounce that last word, but I think it's Co. Co. No. Covorden. Covorden. Town Builder Covorden. There we go. But this is a very cute just like resource management town builder game, um, but it is just in cards. So you're going to be drafting these different cards and then these cards are going to be multi-use. Um, some of the cards you can use for coins that will allow you to purchase different buildings. Some of them you can use them as resources in order to then build the buildings if you decide to use a card as their building. And basically on your turn, you're just drafting two cards and then either deciding to use those cards as resources to build your buildings or build them as the buildings that they are. There's a bunch of different ways to score. And I just really enjoyed the like ease of the play and how fun it was to like draft the cards. I'm a huge fan of card drafting. And it's just a very simple drafting game, but I really, really enjoyed it. So that is why I wanted to chat to you guys about Town Builder 
Kovorden. I wish the name was a little bit easier to pronounce, but it was very fun and I will most likely be looking for a copy now because it was very cute and I do believe that it has a solo mode. So uh, yes, that is that. The next two, like I mentioned, are from Adam. So I played these at Adam. The first one is going to be Nakosu Dice. So this is a trick-taking game that I've been wanting to try for a very long time. It was available, I think, at Essen last year. Um, and it's like a very difficult game to find. Um, it is a Japanese trick-taking game, I believe. So it is obviously very difficult to find here in North America, but I also know that it is pretty difficult to find in Japan as well. Um, but yes, the interesting thing about this trick-taking game is that you are combining both trick-taking with cards as well as trick-taking with dice. So at the beginning of the round, you are going to obviously get your hand of cards. There's going to be I believe four different suits and then it goes, you know, numbers one to something. Um, but I think it's one to six. That would make sense. Um, but you also have these dice in the middle that once you have your hand of cards, you are going to draft these different colored dice. And the one die that is left in the middle at the end is going to determine the trump suit as well as the trump number. So there's actually a trump number, which is very interesting. Um, obviously a trump suit is pretty normal in trick-taking games where you just have a color that trumps all other colors and numbers, but now you have a trump number. So if someone plays the trump number over all of the other numbers, that number is just automatically higher. Um, and then obviously the trump number that's in the trump color is going to trump everything. So it's so cool the way that that happens. Um, but you're also, you're going to be drafting four different dice. You're going to have those four dice and you can use those in tricks. But the last die that you have at the end is going to determine um, or it's going to be the number that you are estimating um, how many tricks you're going to win. And then if you can estimate the correct number exactly, then you will get uh, more victory points in that way. And I do believe that like if you were the only one that got their estimate, you got more victory points. So the less people that um, got their estimate, the more victory points they got. So yeah. Very, very enjoyable trick-taking game. It is so just like interesting and unique and cool. And I will be going to Japan. Francis and I have booked a trip to Japan in October. So we will be going to Japan in October. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I can find myself a copy of Nakosu Dice while we are there or just some more fun trick-taking games. I'm very excited about it. So that is the second game that I wanted to talk about here in the Herb Garden. And then the last one is a game by Pandasaurus Games. This is one of their newer games that they've come out with and it is called Cortisons. So this one I actually saw a few times and I was like, oh, it kind of looks nice, but I'm not 100% sure about the gameplay. And we played it. I played this with, who did I play this with? I played it with Alex from Board Game Co. I played it with Sarah and Melissa from Tantrum House, as well as Jeremy Howard from Man vs. Meeple. We played a five player game of it and I loved it. Basically on your turn, you're going to get three cards into your hand. You're keeping one for yourself. You're giving one to another player. And then the third one, you're going to be placing into this tableau of cards. And depending on if you place that card at the top or the bottom, determines what that suit is going to be worth at the end of the round. And then everyone is going to count up how many victory points they have with all of the cards that they have in front of them. Um, but with the tableau in the center, it's basically if there's more cards on the top than there are on the bottom, it's going to be positive one point. Um, and then if a suit has more cards on the bottom than it does on the top, it's going to be negative. So you're kind of trying to screw over other players and see, you know, like what colors some other players have and put a card at the bottom so that all of their, let's say greens are now negative points instead of positive points. Very fun, very take that, but I do really like it. It didn't feel like super punishing because the decision space is not super big. So it's like, yeah, I'm just, you know, picking some cards, giving some cards, placing some cards, and that is it. So if someone screws you over, it's not like a huge deal because you didn't really put a ton of thought into it. It's just good fun and I really, really liked the art as well. So that is Courtesans, another one that I wanted to chat about in the Herb Garden. Thank you so much for coming to the Herb Garden. Now let's get into the top 10 games. 
of March. All right, so starting off the top 10 with a few games that I do not own, but I played at Adam. So my number 10 is going to be Open Season. So this is a game, I'm not 100% sure what publisher this is coming from, but it was very fun. The theme is not amazing. Um, it kind of weirded me out because you're literally drafting these like monster heads that you have like on your wall. I guess, um, which is a little bit sad. Um, but yes, you are basically creating this, like, what is it called when you have a bunch of pictures on a wall? A gallery wall. There you go. Uh, you're creating a gallery wall of all of these monster heads in different ways. And it kind of uh, is a little bit brain burny. It's a very much like puzzle game, which is one of my favorite things ever. And it pays a lot of attention to rows and columns, which if you guys do not know, I'm a huge fan of Sudoku, so any game that is like puzzly and focuses on rows and columns just has me. And again, this has drafting as well. So on your turn, you're going to be drafting two cards and one of the cards you're going to be placing into a pile and then one of the cards you're going to be placing onto the wall. The wall is going to determine what you are going to be scoring for all of the uh, things you have in your pile at the end of the game. So you're placing things on your wall to determine the victory points you're gaining for the stuff in your pile, which I think is so cool. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think open season is quite available yet, um, but it does have a solo mode and I really do want to show it off on the channel. So fingers crossed I can figure out what the publisher is. I kind of forget who the publisher was, but fingers crossed I can determine who it is and reach out for a review copy or purchase one myself because I really enjoyed that one. So that is open season. Moving on to number nine. This is one that I need to get into my collection because this is a fantastic game to play with big groups of people. And I like sitting down to play this game, I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did, but I loved it. And that game is Expeditions Around the World. So I'm sure you guys have seen this uh, here and there. It's again, another game that's pretty new and I don't think it's quite out yet, but it will be. Um, but basically this is a game that you can play with a lot of players. I don't know how many players you can play it up to, but basically it's this big world map, which I love the art. It is very busy, but it's very cool because it has all of these different kind of um, like very well-known things from each of these different countries. And basically it has a bunch of spots with all of these different countries. You are going to gain a, a hand of all of these different countries. Um, I actually don't think they're countries. I think they're just like places that are well-known in the world because there was Banff and I don't think Banff is definitely not a country. <laughs> I think it's in Vancouver. I should know that being a Canadian. Anyways, I was never very good at ge geography. Is it geography? Yes. I always get geometry and geography mixed up. I promise I did really good in school, guys. I promise. But anyways, I was never good at geography. I loved geography, but I was never good at it. Um, anyways, you have a hand of cards with all of these different locations. And basically, um, on someone's turn, they're going to be placing one of these arrows that are in one of these three different paths. And whenever someone goes through one of the places that you have in your hand, you discard that spot. And basically you are trying to discard all of the cards from your hand first. Also, you're going to be placing out these different markers of your player color that you have to collect in order to not gain uh, negative victory points. I will say this game, I was not very good at it, but it was very fun. And the nice thing about this is one, like I've already said, it plays a lot of players, but also it forces you to pay attention the entire time. Because if someone on their turn decides to place a path that goes to one of the spots that you have in your hand, you have to be the one that's paying attention and being like, oh, I have that, and you discard it. Because if you just miss it, you know, you're not gonna be able to discard. I guess you could discard later, but you know, you wanna try to discard as it's happening. So you don't have to continue looking at the map and seeing like, oh, did someone actually go to where, you know, one of my locations were? Um, so yeah, I really, really enjoyed that one. I do wanna get it in the collection because I feel like it'd be a good one to play with family. So that is Expeditions 
around the world. Moving on to my number eight, I actually do have the next few physically. I think I have the rest of them physically aside from two other ones. So, and it's really sad because my number one I actually don't have, which I should really get on that. But anyways, my number eight is Flip Town. So a huge shout out to Alex from Board Game Co. He actually did a gift to me his copy of Flip Town. Um, so I'm very excited about that. But I learned Flip Town at uh, Breakout Con. My friend, I think it was Steph, it might have been Kat, both of them have a copy of Flip Town, but Steph taught us Flip Town. And it is a wonderful flip and write game where basically you're going to have three cards and those cards are your basic cards from a basic deck of cards. You could actually, um, I do think that they have a like print and play of this. So you can just get your own deck of you know, your standard 52 card deck. Um, and then you just get the print and play and you can play this game. Um, but if you get this physical version, they do have like the dry erase boards and the really nice thematic deck of cards. So yes, you're going to flip over three cards in the middle. Everyone's going to be using the same cards very much like in, you know, Welcome To, things like that, where you can choose whatever ones you want and other players can choose freely what they want. Um, but basically, you're going to be choosing one card to represent the number, one card to represent the suit, and then one card to play into your poker hand. Because yes, this is a Wild Wild West kind of flip and write. So you will be playing some poker, which I don't really know how to play poker very well, but I have, you know, the basics of it. So you're trying to make different things, two of a kind, three of a kind, straights, full houses, all those things. Um, so you're trying to do that, but at the same time using the other two cards for the uh, color, the suit, and the number. And you're going to be placing different things into different sections of this uh, flip and write. So you have a section that is represented by the spades and the clubs and the harps and the diamonds. I'm not gonna get into too many of the things, but you are uh, doing some wrangling, you're doing some mining, you're doing some traveling, and there's like a graveyard. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, there's like a town where you're like doing different things at the different buildings. Uh, it's very fun. I have only played it once, but I really enjoyed it. I knew I would enjoy it because I am a huge fan of flipping rights and rolling rights. Um, I'm typically not a huge fan of themes like the Western kind of theme, but this was fun and I'm really happy to have a copy now so I can now play it solo. Um, so I will most likely be playing this solo over on, uh, you know, the channel live, all those things. So yes, that is my number eight. That is Flip Town. Moving on to my number seven. This was a game that I've had for a while and I finally got taught it and played it at a friend's house. Um, and that game is the Red Cathedral. So I actually did purchase this quite a long time ago from a friend at Gen Con, and I've been waiting to learn it and play it. You can play it solo, which I'm really excited to try it solo eventually. Um, but yes, the Red Cathedral is um, not super hard to explain. Basically, you are going to be moving a die on your turn on this rondelle in order to gain different resources, and you're going to be using those resources to build the Red Cathedral, and you are trying to build the different sections of the Red Cathedral in order to, I think it's kind of a little bit of like area majority with the different columns of the Red Cathedrals. So you're trying to have majority of things in that column built by you. And you also can get different um, kind of upgrades that are going to allow you to do more when you use specific dye colors and different things like that. And overall, I really, really enjoyed it. I have really enjoyed a lot of other Devere games. I really enjoyed the White Castle, specifically multiplayer. I didn't love it solo, but I do need to give it another chance. Um, but yeah, I knew I was going to enjoy the Red Cathedral. I've heard a ton of good things about it. I've heard a lot of people say that it's great solo, so I'm excited to play this one because like I said, I had a little bit of a bad, um, you know, experience with the White Castle, but I should really give that one a chance. And I'm also excited to give the Red Cathedral a chance. So yes, that is my number seven, the Red Cathedral, which thank God I finally got to play it because it has been sitting on my shelf calling my name for a long time. And I 
really, really enjoyed it. So yeah. All right, so moving into my number six, this is another verb and write, specifically is a draft and write, and that is draft and write records, which is from Inside Up Games. This was introduced to me at Adam because Inside Up Games is part of Adam alongside Eagle Griffin Games as well as Queen Games. Um, but yes, I played this at Adam and I fell in love with it. I had so much fun with this. I played it with, uh, again, Jeremy, Melissa from Tantrum House, as well as uh, Alex from Board Game Co. And I think I loved this so much because it mixes a verb and write with drafting, which I absolutely love drafting. I think closed drafting is one of my favorite mechanisms. I really enjoy games such as like It's a Wonderful World, Seven Wonders, um, Trailblazers, and Draft and Write Records is just like that where you have a hand of cards, you're picking one, you're sending it off to your player either on the left or your right, um, and then you are using that card in order to fill in something on your sheet, whether that is gaining a member of your band, or if it's doing some sort of asset or thing in your schedule, a bunch of different things that can then chain into other things, which I will say the amount of chaining in this game is really, really good. It's not too much chaining where you do kind of lose where you are, but it's still a good amount of chaining where it is so satisfying. And I really do love the theme of this one. I feel like there needs to be more music themed games. So really happy to get this one. A huge thank you to Inside Up Games. They did send this over and I think we like did the order while I was at Adam and then it arrived like two days after I got home from Adam. So very, very quick. I will also add that I did get some like player mats for this as well, which is super fun. It's definitely not needed for the gameplay, but basically you're adding in your different band members onto this play mat so that at the end you can see your entire band uh, laid out on the mat. So Yes, anyways, um, I will most likely be playing this solo at some point on the live stream because I've been really enjoying this one. I think it's like currently April 10th or 11th right now and I've already played this like a solid four or five times since I got home from Adam within the last week or so. So yeah, anyways, loved it, so much fun. That is my number six, Draft and Write Records. Moving on to my number five. This is a game that I finally got to the table at Breakout Con. It's one that I've had for a while. I actually got this, I think my friend Steph found it for me secondhand somewhere. And I think I paid about $40 for it. And it is a game that unfortunately is not so much out of print, but uh, the publishing company has since um, stopped making games. But that game is Encyclopedia. So this is a game, like I said, I've had on my shelf for a while and I've been really wanting to play it because I love the theme of this game. I feel like Francis would also really enjoy this theme. Um, he's a huge fan of like exploration and stuff like that. He really enjoyed Darwin's Journey as well. So I feel like this is kind of in that realm of like animal species discovery, exploration kind of vibes. But this one is a dice, um, I guess like drafting kind of placement game, worker placement game. Basically, you're going to be drafting a die on your turn, whether that is one from your own um, area, or you can actually draft one of the other player's die in order to do something on the board. So each of the different spots on the board is going to allow you to do something different, depending on the color that you use and the number you use on the dice. And you are trying to get these dif different uh, cards, these species of animals, and then you are trying to do research on these animals with their different um, kind of habitats and different things. Each of the animals has like four different icons at the bottom that you are wanting to research and get cubes on in order to then kind of publish your research and gain victory points in that way. So I found it very cool and very interesting that a few of us at the table actually took completely different kind of ways of playing the game. One was kind of researching and publishing kind of one after the other a few or like multiple times. And then a few of the guys at the table actually decided to just research a ton and then just publish once or twice at the end. And it ended up being pretty close. So it's cool that you can take such drastically different approaches to the game and have it kind of work out in the end. Um, but yeah, you're also doing a little bit of tableau building with some different abilities and stuff on your board. And I loved this game so, so much. I'm excited to show it off more. It does play one to four players, so it does have a solo mode. So if you guys do want to see this play solo, 
please let me know and I will do a live stream of it. So that is my number five, that is Encyclopedia. All right, so moving into my number four, this is another one that I unfortunately do not have, but I would love to get into the collection eventually. This is one that I've seen a few times, but the cover is a little bit weird because it's just a woman's face. It doesn't actually have the name on the cover. The name of the game is actually on the side and that game is Kelte. I think it's called Kelte. Um, could be Celte, but I'm thinking it's Kelte. Um, but this game I actually played again at Breakout Con with my friends uh, Kat and Steph. And I didn't do very well at this game, but it was a very interesting game where basically you have these different workers kind of that you are using in order to do different things. And the more of a specific type of worker that you have, the stronger the action is that you can take with that specific worker. So you have like the green, which would be the builders. And depending on how many builders you had, that's how you could build these different buildings. Um, and it's just a very typical Euro game, but it brought in some different things that I thought was very cool. This was one of the games that I played pretty late on one of the nights of Breakout Con, so I don't exactly remember how it plays, but I do remember enjoying it very, very much. And it just kind of uh, checking off those boxes of like a medium heavy Euro that I just really, really enjoy. And I really enjoy games where it has you like the amount of workers that you have of a specific type or like having workers that can only be used for specific things. I really enjoy those in games. I actually have another game that I'll talk about shortly that has that similar thing where it's very specific with the like workers that you have to use to do specific actions. And in Kelte, the really cool thing, like I said, is that the more of one specific worker you have, the stronger your action is. And you're not actually placing out a worker, it's just that you have them there. So if I had, let's say three of them, my building action could be really, really strong. And eventually you can actually get them like into your tribe instead of actually having them you know, in an area, you can actually like make them permanent in like your tribe, I guess. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I'm butchering explaining this game. Definitely recommend checking out Kelte because it was very, very fun and I very much so enjoyed it. So that is why it is my number four. All right, so moving on to my number three game, I will say right now, my number two and my number three are so close. These were actually my top two games that I played at Adam and I seriously can't really compare them because one is like an extremely heavy Euro and one is not. And I think that's probably what is contributing to this one being number three. Uh, but the game that I'm talking about is, oh my goodness, Inventions, Evolution of Ideas. So this is a Vitella Serta game. This is, I believe, his newest game. He's working on another one, but this is like his most recent released game and I played this at Adam and I actually just recently did an unboxing and first impressions video of that one so if you guys want to know more about my thoughts and more about the game then definitely go check that out. I will have it either there or here um, but yes this is my number three and I do think the reason why this is number three and not number two is because it is such a heavy game and it just freaking broke my brain and yes I love these types of games but it's definitely not a game that you can get to the table often and it's not one that you know is going to take a quick little you know hour long game. This is going to be like a time commitment and uh, I freaking love it. Let me just tell you, I love this game. It was very, very fun. Obviously I enjoyed it. It's still my number three, but comparing it to the other one, which is a lot easier to get to the table, that's kind of my thought process here. But in general for gameplay, I enjoyed them both equally. Um, I enjoyed both of them very, very much. This one's just probably a little bit more of a dedication and a, uh, an experience, that's for sure. Okay, that is my number three. That is Inventions, uh, Evolution of Ideas. And moving on to my number two, like I said, it was very close between this and Inventions, but this one's just a little bit easier to get to the table. And this is from a publisher called Queen Games. And I'm gonna say right now, I have not played a ton of Queen Games. I think I've only played 
one other queen game and that was on BGA and it was Luxor, which I really enjoyed Luxor. Luxor was a good one. Um, but I had just never really had the opportunity to play a lot of queen games. A lot of the um, like local gamers and like my friends, none of them really have many queen games. And I feel like I am now like on this path and I now want to try every single one of queen games because I loved this game. And I did not realize for some reason that uh, Stefan Feld, the designer of, you guys can't see it, but one of my favorite games, maybe even my favorite game, we'll see, uh, but Castles of Burgundy, Stefan Feld, he actually has a lot of other games and a lot of them are from Queen Games. And this game here is actually from Stefan Feld, uh, I believe, I'm going to sound like an idiot if it's not, but I'm almost 100% sure it's definitely, yeah, Steffenfeld City Collection. So this is one of the City Collection games, and that is Vienna. So I tried Vienna for the first time at Adam, and I loved this game so much. Um, I don't know what it was. I think it's just because it surprised me. Um, and I also just really genuinely enjoyed the gameplay. Um, basically, on your turn, um, everyone's going to be doing this simultaneously, but you have a board and everyone's going to get three cards at the beginning of their turn. And you're going to decide where you're going to be putting these three cards. The furthest left is going to be the card that you're going to use for its ongoing ability in your tableau. The second card is going to be for a resource that you're going to collect. And the third one, which is actually going in your fourth spot, is going to be the track that gets pushed up. And I just love multi-use cards. That's something that I really enjoy in games. And basically what you're doing is you're placing workers onto this map um, in order to have these different connections. Once you have these connections, you actually get some sort of good. And however many connections are connected to that good um, is how many victory points you're gonna get. And then the goods that you're collecting, the tracks that you're going up is going to determine how many victory points you're going to get for the certain goods that you've collected based off of where they are on the tracks. So it's just this very, like, everything's kind of connected. You have these different ongoing abilities that are going to help you. You have these quests or these uh, different kind of goals that you're going for um, based off of what kind of flag you are placed out on. And I don't know what it was. It was just so fun. I really enjoyed it. I played this again with Alex from Board Game Co. as well as Melissa from Tantrum House. And yeah, it has just sparked this like need to try more of the Steffenfeld City Collection. If anyone out there has recommendations for more of the Steffenfeld City Collection, please let me know some of your favorites down below. I must try more of these, um, but yes, that is Vienna. I will say there's also like art on this side as well. But yeah, really enjoyed Vienna and I'm super excited to try more of the Queen Games. A huge shout out to Queen Games for sending me home with this copy of Vienna because like I said, it was probably my favorite game that I played at Adam with inventions coming in very close, but that one just like broke my brain. Um, but yeah, Vienna was very fun and that's why it is my number two. And moving on to my number one, this is a game that I honestly cannot tell you why I haven't bought this game yet. This is a game that I have become obsessed with. And there were some other content creators that were really speaking highly about this game. Um, it was specifically like with the like 2023 wrap ups and stuff, which to me, this game that I'm going to talk about is more of a 2024 release because I, I don't think you could have gotten it before unless you like went to Essen and stuff. But now I believe Renegade Game Studios is bringing it to North America. And that game is The Veil of Eternity. Guys, this game, ooh, this game is addicting. This game just has me. And again, like I said, I don't know why I haven't gone out and bought it yet. Um, I think the one thing that's holding me back is that there is no solo in it, unfortunately. And I always have to think when I'm going to buy a game, who I'm going to be playing with and if I need it or not, because the people that I'm going to be playing The Veil of Eternity with already has a copy of Veil of Eternity. So do I need it? My friend Aiden has it. My friend Kat has it. Do I need a copy of The Veil of Eternity? 
If I want to introduce it to Francis, yes. If I want to introduce it to my friends Tom and Asha, yes. Or some other friends that we might be having over for a board game day. So I think I have now successfully talked myself into buying the Veil of Eternity. So it's probably something I will purchase right after this video. But anyways, the Veil of Eternity is primarily just a card-based tableau builder race game where basically you are trying to be the first person to get to 60 points by uh, purchasing or I guess selling these monsters uh, or you can tame the monster and then summon it into your tableau and there are five different colors of monsters or families so there's red pink green blue and purple and you are basically just making this engine of these cards in front of you and i just think it is the coolest game the like different combinations of cards in this game just has me and i am addicted i've been playing it non-stop on bga i uh i'm now going to go purchase it and i've played it probably a solid like five times um with some of my friends and I also played it at Adam with David from Man vs. Meeple, um, as well as Tyler and Ilya from Cavre, um, and Alex from Board Game Co. And I do think that David um, has mentioned that Veil of Eternity is like one of his favorite games, uh, or at least one of his uh, favorites of 2023. So, yes. Anyways, that is my number one, The Veil of Eternity. I am officially obsessed and I will most likely go and purchase a copy uh, after this video. All right, friends. So that is going to be everything for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed hearing about all of my favorite games or my top 10 games of March, as well as my smaller box games, card games, uh, the herb garden, and all of my BG stats for the month of March. Apologies that this video is a little bit late. I don't know when I'm going to be able to edit this and upload it, but hopefully it is sometime soon that I can get this up for you guys. I know it's going to be a little bit late, so apologies. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button down below if you've yet to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. We are getting pretty close to 27,000 subscribers here in the garden. So definitely hit the subscribe button if you have yet to do so. We'd love to have you. And yeah, comment down below all of your favorite games of March. I'd love to know that down below. And hopefully you guys have a good rest of your day. Love you so much. Remember, you are somebody's reason to smile. And I will see you in... Sewing Solo, the next board game video. Bye friends. <laughs>